Okay, this is section 2.5, multiplication of real numbers. Now we have two basic rules for multiplication that are really, really important. So first of all, if I have a positive number times a positive number, my output is going to be positive. If I have a negative number times a negative number, my output is going to be positive also. So I always think about as um, for the double negative, Two wrongs don't make a right, but two negatives make a positive. So whenever I multiply same signs, my answers are going to be positive. Now the other thing I could do is I could multiply a positive number and a negative number, or a negative number and a positive number. And with those two cases, my answer is going to be negative. So if I multiply different signs, my output is negative. Okay, now let's um, take it a step further. If I multiply more than two terms, if I have an odd number of negative signs, so I want you to think about that for a second. Okay, now whenever I'm not really sure, what I do is I get some small numbers and I just multiply. So if I have a negative 1 times negative 1, times negative 2, negative 1 times negative 1, that gives me positive 1. Now, if positive 1 times negative 2, oh, that's equal to negative 2. So if I have an odd number of negative signs that I'm multiplying together, my output is negative. So if I have an even number of positive signs, my output is positive. Okay, now let's multiply. So if I have 3 times 7, positive times a positive, I get a positive 21. Negative 6 times a positive 4, negative times a positive is a negative, gives me negative 24. Negative 4 times negative 5, negative times a negative, going to get a positive 20. 3 times negative 6, get negative 18. Okay, now let's look what happens when we multiply more terms. So now I have negative 3 times 4 times negative 2. I can look at this and I know before I do the first operation that my output is going to be positive. I have 1, 2 negative signs. It's an even number so I know my output's positive. Negative 3 times 4 gives me negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 2 gives me a positive 24. And doing that quick little check is going to help me verify that I haven't made a mistake. So now negative 1 half times negative 2 times negative 3. Well, negative 2 times negative 3 is going to give me a positive 6. Negative 1 half times 6 or half of 6 is going to give me 3. It's a positive times a negative, so I know it's negative 3. Negative 1 to the fourth power. Now remember those exponents, that's telling me that I have negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So I have an even number of negatives, so I know that my output is going to be positive. And in this case, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 just gives me 1. Okay, so just a quick review from chapter 1. I want you to write y times y times y times y times y in exponential form. Well, math people are lazy. We don't want to write out all those y's. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. So I'm going to use my little math shorthand and write y to the fifth power. It's really important for when we're multiplying variables. So 2 times x times x. 2, how many x's do I have? I have 2 of those, so I have 2x squared. Now, negative 2 times x times x, negative 2x squared. 3 times negative n times negative n times negative n. Be careful with this one. I have an odd number of negatives, so I know my final answer is going to be negative. I don't have another number to multiply 3 by, 
And how many n's do I have? 3. So I have negative 3n cubed, or negative 3n to the third power. Let's look at t. Oh, I've got lots of negatives. Let's look and see how many I have. I have 1, 2, 3, 4 negative signs. Okay, I've got an even number of negative signs, so I know my output's going to be positive. So I have 4. How many x's do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have 4x to the fourth power. Okay, now just like the rules of the properties of addition, we have properties of multiplication. The commutative property tells me that the order I multiply something doesn't matter. So a times b is the same as b times a. So 3 times negative 2 is the same thing as negative 2 times 3. The associative property, once again you're talking about who you're associating with. So a times b times c is the same as a times parentheses b times c. Negative 6 times 2 times 3 well, that's the same as negative 6. Oops, let me put my little time sign. Times 2 times 3. Now, the identity property. Remember, that's a number times 1 is equal to itself. Whenever I have the identity property, you're getting back the core of what you start with. It's like looking in the mirror. So a times 1, well, that just gives me a. Negative 4 times 1 get negative 4. Now the property of 0, any number times 0 is 0. So a times 0 is 0, 7 times 0 is 0. There's absolutely no number that you can multiply. Whenever you multiply 0 by any number, it's just 0. The property of opposites, the product of a number and negative 1 is the opposite. So whenever I multiply negative 1 by something, I just get the opposite. So with the property of opposites, a times negative 1 gives me negative a. Negative 3 times negative 1 gives me a positive 3. I just get the opposite. Okay, now let's identify the property. So if I have 5 times 1 is equal to 5, I'm getting back the essence of what I started with. So that would be the identity. Negative 3 times 4 is equal to 4 times negative 3. We'll just switch the order. So that's commutative. Negative 3 times 0 is equal to 0. Okay, that's going to be my property of 0. Negative 4 times 3 times negative 6 is equal to negative 4 times 3 times negative 6. Now when I see these parentheses, I'm going to check and see what changes. I've got negative 4 times 3. Oh, 3 times negative 6. I have all the same numbers, but they're changed who they're associating with, so it's the associative property. Now we have negative 6 times negative 1 equals positive 6. I have the opposite of what I started with, so it's the property of opposites. Okay, now B is a little bit tricky. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to evaluate an expression with a value of x that's given. So I have 2 times negative x times negative x when x is equal to negative 7. Now you have to be careful because I have 2 times the negative of whatever my x is. And in this case my x is negative 7, so I have negative negative 7 times negative negative 7. So I have 2, up oh, 2 wrongs don't make a right, but 2 negatives make a positive, so I have 2 times 7 times 7. 7 times 7 is 49. 2 times 49 is 98. Now I have negative 1 times x, close parentheses, times x, when x is equal to negative 3. So I have negative 1 times negative 3 
times negative 3. Negative times a negative gives me a positive. It's a property of opposites right here. So I have the 3 times negative 3. My answer is negative 9.